Welcome to the video lecture series on strength of materials. Today we will discuss the topic simple stresses and strains. Myself, Dr. P. Pramod Kumar, Associate Professor of Mechanical Engineering, MLR Institute of Technology, Hyderabad. Overview of presentation. In this class, we are going to discuss introduction to stress, introduction to solids, stress and strains, types of stresses, Hooke's law. Let us start with introduction to solids. A solid is a body in which all molecules are closely packed and it has very definite shape and it will resist all the loads. Whereas liquids, liquids do not have definite shape but they will possess the shape of the container in which it is poured and the molecules distance uh, relatively large. Whereas in uh, gases, uh, the distance between the molecules is uh, very, very high and they will not confine to the any boundaries and it will escape into the atmosphere. Now, coming to the solids, the solid bodies in the universe are classified into two types. One is elastic body, other one plastic body. The elastic body is a body in which the deformation will occur due to the application of load and on the removal of load, the body will regain its uh, original shape and dimensions. The plastic body, it is a body in which uh, the deformations occurred due to the load are permanent. That means uh, the body will not regain its original shape and dimensions after removal of load. Both elastic materials and plastic materials uh, will undergo deformation, whether it is permanent or temporary, all the solid bodies. Uh, will undergo deformation. Let us pay concentration to the word deformation. Deformation is defined as a deviation or any deviation from original shape and dimensions due to the application of load. For example, if we apply a tensile load on a body, a tensile load is a load which acts away from the center along the axis. Due to this load, the deformation is the body will elongate the length of the body increases. Similarly, if you apply compressive load, compressive load, due to compressive loads, the body will shorten or contract. So, here in this case, the deformation is change in length. The deformation is change in length. Similarly, if you apply a load perpendicular to the axis of the member, then the body will bend into circular arc shape. So, here the deformation is deflection, deflection from the original position. So, these are all different deformations occurred due to the loads. So, now let us again pay attention to the word deformation, it is any deviation from the original shape and dimensions due to the application of load. All the bodies, all the solid bodies will undergo deformation on the application of load. When an external load is applied on the body, the body will undergo deformation. Now, while deforming, the body will resist the deformation. No body is ready to uh, deform uh, easily first uh, they will resist the deformation. So, the resistance offered by the body against deformation per unit area is called stress. Actually, all molecules will participate in resisting the applied load or deformation caused by the applied load. But, it is very difficult to calculate the resistance offered by each and every single molecule. That is why, we will take an average of resistance by considering resistance offered by the body per unit area. So, the resistance offered by the body per unit area is called stress. The total resistance offered by the body before it fails is called strength of the material. On the application of load, the body deforms and if you continue to apply load, the body continues deformation and after some time, the body 
unable to resist and it will fail. The maximum stress that can be withstand by the body before it goes to failure is called its strength. Let us understand the concept of strength. Consider a bar which is subjected to an axial load P, axial tensile load P and its cross sectional area is A. Due to this application of uh, a tensile load, the body will get elongated. Now, the body is resisting the elongation. Consider a section XX. At this section, now look at the top portion which is subjected to an axial pull P. Now, the axial pull P on the top portion is resisted by the bottom portion with resistance R. That means, at XX section, the resistance to deformation is R. Resistance to deformation is always equal to the applied load. That means, if we increase the load, the resistance also increases. But, there is a certain limit to the resistance. After that, it cannot increase further. Then, the body goes to failure. Now, look at the bottom portion. The resistance offered against deformation is at the section is R. Now, the total body at section XX, we have resistance offered by the section against applied load and the resistance is equal to the applied load. Now, within certain limit, the resistance is exactly equal to applied load P. Now, from the definition of stress, stress is nothing but the resistance offered by the body per unit area. Now, take the formula, stress is equal to R by A, resistance offered by the body against cross-sectional area. R is equal to P. Therefore, stress is given by P by A, load by area. Stress is denoted by sigma and uh, its units in SA system, it is Newton per mm square in general. Stress is equal to load divided by cross-sectional area. Now, let us look into strain. Again, consider a bar of length L diameter D subjected to an axial tensile load P as shown in figure. Its diameter is D and uh, its original length is L. What happens due to the application of this tensile load on the body? The body will get elongate. See, the final uh, dimensions of the body are like this. So, the body get elongated and its final length is now LF. The length is increased due to the application of axial tensile load. Now, the original length is equal to L and the final length is LF. The difference between the final length and original length is called as change in length. The change in length of the body is denoted by delta L which is given by the final length minus initial length. Now, the ratio of change in length to original length is called strain. It is the ratio, the strain is the ratio of change in length to the original length. As it is a ratio of same parameters, strain has no units. Now, see the different types of uh, stresses. First one, tensile stress. A tensile stress is the resistance offered by the body against elongation. What is the definition of uh, stress? A simple stress. It is the resistance offered by the body against deformation. But here in tensile stress, stress definition, the deformation is replaced by elongation. It is a particular deformation which will occur due to the application of a tensile load. Due to tensile load, the body will get elongated and the resistance offered by the body against elongation is called a tensile stress. Look at the diagram. A body is subjected to a tensile load P. Now, compressive stress. It is the resistance offered by the body against contraction. See, if you apply a compressive load, compressive load, the body will get shortened or contracted. Here, in tensile stress, 
and compressive stress, the loads are applied axially. In the compressive stress, due to the application of compressive load, the body will shorten, the length will decrease. The resistance offered by the body against this contraction is called compressive stress. Now look at shear stress. Shear stress is the resistance offered by the body against angular distortion. Consider a uh, rectangular block ABCD subjected to a shear force as shown in figure. Look at the diagram. The forces are acting on the surface of the body. Due to this tensile force, there may be a failure at the section shown. At the section shown. So, what happens due to the application of uh, shear force? The body shape will be distorted. It will take the uh, a rectangular block will take the shape of uh, a rhombus. So, the shape distortion will take place. Now, the angular di distortion can be measured by the angle at any corner with reference to the original uh, reference line. So, here the tan phi, the tan phi is the angular distortion. So, tan phi is called the shear strain. The shear strain due to the application of shear stress is given by tan phi is equal to dl by l. It is uh, the length distorted to the original length. Let us learn Hooke's law. Hooke's law states that within certain limit, especially within elastic limit, stress is directly proportional to strain. The stress is directly proportional to strain. It is not shear stress. Stress. Stress is directly proportional to strain. So, stress is given by uh, sigma and strain is usually denoted by epsilon. So, stress is proportional to strain and stress equal to a proportionality constant. Strain into a proportionality constant. This proportionality constant is called Young's modulus. Young's modulus is the measure of stiffness of the material. So, E is called Young's modulus or modulus of elasticity whose units are Newton per mm square in SI system. It is given by E is equal to stress by strain. We know that stress is given by load by area and strain is given by change in length to the original length. So, stress is given by load by area and uh, change in length to original length is called strain. So, if we substitute the terminology or uh, terms, uh, the usual terms, uh, the equation is load is denoted by P and area of cross section is in A and delta L is the change in length and L is original length. Now, the equation for Young's modulus is P L by A delta L. The Young's modulus can be calculated by using the formula for the given applied load, for the given cross section and for the given uh, length. If you know the change in length, we can find the Young's modulus. Or in the other sense, the formula can be very widely used for calculating the change in length of the body. To find the change in length, usually we need to conduct an experiment. If we know the Young's modulus of the material without conducting any experiment for the given load, length and area of cross section, we can calculate the change in length by using this formula delta L is equal to P L by A E. Now, look at the stress strain curve of a ductile material. A ductile material is a material which uh, um, is subjected to elongation and which is ready to elongate on the application of load. Whereas, brittle materials are very poor in tension and they will not resist any tensile load, but they are strong in uh, compressive loads. To draw the stress strain curve, stress is taken on y axis and uh, strain on the x axis. The experiment will be conducted for getting the data for stress and strains 
the experiment will be conducted by taking a rod of uniform diameter and fixing the rod in between two jaws one is fixed jaw and other one is movable jaw movable jaw so by the application of load the jaw will move upwards and the, at bottom the rod is fixed so what happens the rod will be subjected to tensile load due to the tensile load the body will get elongated and after some time the body will fail now record the data of load and its corresponding change in length change in length so while conducting the experiments tensile test experiment take the data load and its corresponding change in length so load by area gives us load by area gives us stress and change in length by original length gives us the strain now using this data plot the curve plot the curve now look at the curve for ductile material it will be proportional the stress is directly proportional to certain limit up to certain point a so this point is called a proportional limit a proportional limit on stress strain curve of a ductile material is a point up to which the stress is directly proportional to strain now if you further increase the load there is another point on the curve that is elastic limit elastic limit is the point or stress up to which the body shows elongation that means up to point b that means up to stress b the body will show the property called elongation after that the body will enter into plastic region where the deformation is permanent up to this point we can load and we on the removal of load the body will uh, come back to its original dimensions so while designing we will limit the stresses to elastic limit upper yield point on the further increment of load we can find the upper yield point it is very important point on the stress strain curve here without appreciable load the body gets elongated uh, much so from this point onwards um, without taking load the body starts elongating so here the point c is called uh, upper yield point uh, it is the point where the yielding of material starts uh, and point d where the yielding stops uh, it is called lower yield point then the body again uh, goes to ultimate stress it is the point at which the stress is maximum or the maximum stress point after that the body starts losing its strength and finally it fails at failure stress or failure or breaking stress or breaking point f this is the stress strain curve for a ductile material or look at the same curve for brittle material so the brittle material example of brittle material is chalk chips biscuits so which will not elongate on the application of load they will directly break so here for brittle materials the stress strain curve is directly failure the body on the application of load it directly fails it has only one point that is breaking point summary today in this class we have seen different types of solids then concept of stress and strain next types of stresses types of stresses next hooke's law
and at last stress strain curves uh, stress strain curves for ductile materials as well as brittle materials with this we will stop for today and we will meet in our next video lecture thank you thank you so much